All right, let's talk wind turbines. You know, when you see one of those massive white towers spinning in a field, you probably think, modern, green energy, the future, right? Well, what if I told you their story actually starts way, way back? I'm talking a time and place you'd probably never guess. So, picture it in your head. The very first machine to generate electricity from the wind. What's it look like? I'm guessing you're thinking, you know, maybe something from the early 1900s? Kind of clunky, a little experimental looking, right? Okay, get this. The real ancestor, it's ancient. We're talking more than a thousand years ago. This is long before anyone even knew what electricity was. The idea was simply to use the wind to do heavy lifting. So, to find the origin, we're not heading to a modern lab in Denmark or the U.S. Nope. We have to go back in time to the deserts of ancient Persia, which is now modern-day Iran, because this is where the very first wind-powered machines were born. They were called Panamoni windmills, and they were brilliant in their simplicity. Picture these tall towers made of mud brick. Inside, you've got a vertical axle with big cloth sails attached to it. When the wind blows, the whole thing spins, and that spinning shaft is connected directly to a giant stone for grinding grain or to a pump to pull up water. See, it's all about pure, direct mechanical power, just doing the hard work that people and animals would have had to do otherwise. Okay, and this right here is maybe the most important point of the whole story. A windmill, like those ancient ones, turns wind into mechanical energy. It physically does a job, like grinding. But a wind turbine, that turns wind energy into electrical energy. And that one simple change, from mechanical to electrical, that was the game changer. It changed everything. So for hundreds and hundreds of years, that's what windmills did. They ground stuff, they pump stuff, purely mechanical. But then... The late 1800s happened, and along with it came this brand new, almost magical force, electricity. Suddenly, a few brilliant inventors had a light bulb moment, literally. They thought, wait a minute, what if we took that ancient idea of a windmill and used it to make electricity? And what's amazing is how fast it happened. In just five years, that's it. Three different inventors in three different places all had the same basic idea. They took that old windmill concept, hooked it up to a dynamo, which is just an early generator, and bam, the wind turbine was born. So let's meet these guys, because their stories show this incredible, super fast evolution of an idea, from just a cool concept to a technology that would, eventually, change the world. Okay, first up is Josef Friedlander, an Austrian engineer. And it's funny, for a long time other people got the credit, but now we know for sure his machine, which he showed off in Vienna back in 1883, was the actual world's first electricity-producing wind turbine. And he didn't do this in some dusty workshop. No, he put it on display at this huge international electrical exhibition in Vienna. He basically took a standard American-style windmill, you know, the kind you see on farms, connected it to a dynamo, and used it to power lights, motors, even a thresher. This was a show. He was basically shouting to the world, hey, look what we can do now. We can make electricity from the wind. Okay, so four years later, we jump over to Scotland. A professor named James Blythe sees this idea, but he's not thinking about big public shows. He's thinking smaller, more personal. He just wanted to light up his vacation cottage. And he actually did it. He built this turbine right in his garden with cloth sails, kind of like those ancient Persian windmills. It charged up some batteries, and those batteries powered the lights inside his house. Just think about that for a second. In 1887, his little cottage in Scotland was the only house in the entire world being lit by wind power. Incredible. And here's where the story gets kind of hilarious. Blythe was a generous guy, so he offered his extra power to light up the main street of his village for free. But the locals, they were having none of it. They were super skeptical of this weird new electric wind and apparently called it the work of the devil. So, yeah, early adoption can be a little tricky. All right, so just one year later, in 1888, we hop across the Atlantic to America, where an inventor named Charles F. Brush basically said, a cottage? That's cute. He decided to take this idea and scale it way, way up. We're not talking about a cottage anymore. We're talking about powering his entire mansion and estate. And when I say he scaled it up, I'm not kidding. The thing he built was an absolute monster. It weighed 80,000 pounds. That's 40 tons. Think about that. That's like the weight of several school buses. It was a true giant, a beast of a machine looming over his property in Cleveland. 
I mean, look at these numbers. The rotor was 56 feet across, with 144 blades. It cranked out 12 kilowatts of power, which was enough to light up around 350 light bulbs in his mansion. But here's the real genius part. The thing that made it so special? It was fully automatic. It could actually adjust itself when the wind got too strong. And that, that right there is a feature that every single modern wind turbine still uses today. So you're probably thinking, okay, these inventions are amazing. Why didn't wind power just take over the world right then and there? And the simple answer is, these guys were brilliant, but they were just a little too early to the party. But, I mean, just look at how fast things moved. You go from Frylander's public demo, to Blythe's little wind-powered house, to Brush's massive automated giant. All in five years. They basically laid out the entire playbook for wind energy in half a decade. The thing is, back in the late 1800s, coal and oil were king. They were cheap, there was tons of it, and they were fueling the whole industrial revolution. So next to that, these amazing wind machines just seemed like cool science projects. You know, neat little curiosities, but not a serious way to power the world. And that's really their legacy. They didn't kickstart a global industry right away. What they did was provide the proof of concept. They proved it could be done. They showed everyone that you could take the power of the wind and turn it into clean, useful electricity. They answered the question, is this even possible, with a definite yes. So, flash forward a bunch of decades. The world starts hitting energy problems, starts looking for cleaner ways to make power. And the engineers of that new era didn't have to invent everything from square one, nope. They could pull out the history books and look at the groundwork laid by Friedlander, Blythe, and Brush. The foundation was already there, waiting for them. So when you think about it, the journey is just incredible. From an ancient windmill in Persia, just grinding grain, all the way to a little cottage in Scotland lit up with electricity from the wind. It's a huge story. Those 19th century pioneers made the first giant leap from mechanical to electrical. It really makes you wonder, what's the next giant leap going to be?